Hello, my name is Daniela, and I'm here to tell you about all of the books that I've read in July and August. The first book I read in July was From Lukov with Love. This is by Mariana Zapata, and it is a romance. I read this while I was on holiday in Lindos, and I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. However, it was super, super, super slow burn, and I am impatient. <laughs> I am very impatient. So waiting like an entire book for one small sex scene at the end, which wasn't that good, um, was kind of annoying for me. However, the reason I kept reading the book is because I really enjoyed the banter between the two characters. It was also in an ice skating setting, so the two characters are figure skaters and I love watching figure skating, I've always loved it, and so that was really interesting for me. I think if you like a slow burn romance, you will love this book. If you are like me and you're more impatient, uh, you might find it a bit frustrating. <laughs> I think it's put me off reading more of her books, because I'm assuming that's what she does, like super, super, super slow burn romance. Um, and I just, I don't think that's for me. But I still give it four stars just because I did get through it till the end and it made me laugh. The chemistry was there and the banter was there. It just took too long for me. <laughs> the next book I read is Slaughterhouse Five. So this is my first ever classic since I restarted my reading journey in August last year. And I did not like this. I gave it one star. I found it really, really annoying. <laughs> this book is written by Kurt Vonnegut and he was actually present at the bombing of Dresden in the Second World War. The first couple of pages I enjoyed and they were kind of from his perspective, an introduction to the fiction book that he has written based on what happened. And then the book proceeds with the actual book that he has written. And that is the part I didn't enjoy. So like the majority of the book. His main character is called Billy Pilgrim, who is time traveling throughout this book. And you're seeing different parts of Billy Pilgrim's life. There is a saying in this book that is used so many times. I think it's in the, it's in the book over a hundred times. And the saying is, so it goes. And that in itself, repeating that saying all the time, really, really annoyed me. It really irritated me. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. Um, and then the last line of the book, he likes to refer back to these sayings that he said earlier on in the book. And the last line of the book just made me want to throw this book across the room. I just didn't get it. My partner Andy read this book after me. He says that I should read it again, I didn't understand apparently, and that we're actually looking at Billy Pilgrim's life, and he's not actually time travelling, we're just experiencing his life in the wrong order. I, I don't know if it was the way he's written it, but I didn't find it moving. It didn't seem very anti-war to me. I just think I expected something very different to what I got, and so I did not enjoy this. I would love to know your thoughts on this book if you have read it. Did you get it? Next up I read The Moss House by Clara Barley and I cannot for the life of me find my copy. I have no idea where I put it. Which is really disappointing because I did want to read you some parts out of the book. But I can't do that because I can't find the book. I ended up giving this book three stars. I did enjoy it. I just found parts of it quite boring. There were moments where the writing was so good and I was loving it. And then there were other moments where I was bored to tears. So this is a fiction book based on Anne Lister of Shipton Hall in Halifax in the UK. I live nearby to this place, which is why the book appealed to me. So it is a fiction book, but it is based on factual information from Anne Lister's life. So Anne Lister was known for having relationships with other women. She never wanted to marry. I think it's based in the 1800s. So at that point in time, it was completely frowned upon to have a relationship with someone of the same sex. It was frowned upon to not marry. It was frowned upon for women to be involved in business or to run a household. It was usually the man that was expected to do that stuff. So Anne Lister very much went against the grain and people didn't like her for that. This book is told in two perspectives. We get Anne Lister's perspective and we also get the perspective of one of her lovers, which is Anne Walker. The first line in the book is, marry a man i would rather die and i just love that i love that's how the book starts there were several other points in the book that i really really loved 
obviously I can't find my copy so I can't tell you what they were. This was taken from further on in the book but it's provided before the book starts and it says, as our warm bodies and lips press together, I finally feel free, content and dare I say it, in love again. I pull back to look down into my lover's eyes and hoping to see the same reflected back at me, I see instead the opposite. I realise that Miss Walker has everything a woman could ever desire to be happy, except the very power to enjoy it, and there is nothing I can ever do to change that. I really liked that bit. I feel like some of the writing in this was so powerful and so well written, but then so much of it wasn't, which was disappointing. So that's why I gave it three stars, but I think if you haven't read anything to do with Anne Lisa, it is a really fun book to read. Learning about her life and what happened in her life and how she was treated is really interesting. There's a TV series that they did called Gentleman Jack, which is also based on Anne Lister. That was one of her nicknames she was given. And I really, really want to watch that now. Next up, I read Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. This is a YA romance book, which I give four stars. I really enjoyed this book. Partway through the book, you learn where the title comes from and why that is the title and it is so adorable. Once again, as with all Colleen Hoover books that I've read so far, this was a book where I didn't want to put the book down. I really enjoyed the chemistry between the characters. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as some of Colleen Hoover's other books just because it was YA. I had one DNF this month which is Jade Fire Gold. I got quite a way into this. So I got to page 180 out of 449 so I got a good way into this and at this point in the book which is like 40% maybe I hadn't enjoyed any of it up till this point and I also felt like the story hadn't really started yet which is really bizarre as far as I'm aware it's a standalone so why about halfway through the book is nothing happening why has nothing happened yet we have two characters whose perspectives we're following in this book and I just wasn't enjoying either of them and for some reason it just felt really disjointed to me. I think a lot of people also really liked this book but I just could not get on with it. So sadly a DNF for Jade Firegold. Next up I read volume one of Laura Olympus. I enjoyed this. It was a very quick read. I really like the artwork in these. There's not much text so it is very quick to read. My problem with this book is I don't like how small all the images are. I don't like how much white space is left in the book. I kind of wish they'd just like made them bigger and made the book longer. Um, because if you're reading a graphic novel like this, where it's a full colour illustration, I just feel like we need to show these illustrations off better. Like, why are they all so small? I want them to be bigger. I know this is very popular with a lot of people, but I just feel like it didn't live up to the hype for me. While it was cute, I didn't really feel that much chemistry between the characters. I just feel like the amount of contents you get and the amount of storyline you get in this, it doesn't really feel long enough to give it a high rating. So I gave this one three stars. It was okay, it was fun, it was quick. <laughs> um, I just feel like I can't really give it any higher than that just because there wasn't that much going on in this particular book. Next up I read Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms from the Throne of Glass series and I did the tandem read for these which I'm very very glad I did. So this is my first time reading the Throne of Glass series. I've done it with the tandem read. I read Assassin's Blade first before reading anything else. Again super glad that I did that. I feel like you definitely need to read Assassin's Blade before you read the rest of the series. It sets up Selena, it makes her more likeable. There's just so, so many callbacks to Assassin's Blade throughout this entire series and it just adds so much more emotion, I feel. I really, really enjoyed Empire of Storms. I gave it five stars. These two books, because I've done the tandem read, are kind of melded together in my head. I feel like the tandem read is good because it gives you a piece of information in Tower of Dawn that you wouldn't have had by the time you get to a certain part in Empire of Storms had you read them in publication order. And I feel like the piece of information that you get doing the tandem read sets up the end of Empire of Storms really really well, definitely increases the fret level. The fret level was increased for me like tenfold. I would highly recommend the tandem read for these. This book was go go go. All my favourite characters were in this storyline 
and I just really really enjoyed it it was completely action-packed from start to finish I just absolutely love this these books are just so fun and so exciting to read Tower of Dawn I was going to give Tower of Dawn three stars for like the majority of this book I think I got to about 60% into Tower of Dawns before things turned around for me the first half of Tower of Dawn I was really really bored I wasn't interested in the characters we were following I wasn't interested in the new characters that were being introduced and then the last 40% of this book things really heated up I started to care about characters we got some new information that was insane insane um very exciting parts in the second half of this book and from there on i really really enjoyed it i do understand why sarah j mass wrote this book and why we have to have the first 60 percent of the book i don't think i would have felt the way i felt at the end of this book had i not read the first 60 percent of this book it's there for a reason it's there to make you feel a certain way and it worked. I gave it four stars. Last 40% of the book definitely bumped it up for me. I am now very, very scared to continue and finish the series. So I'm currently avoiding reading the last book, which is Kingdom of Ash, just because A, I'm terrified and B, I don't want it to end. <laughs> My reading vlog from reading both of these books will be going up in the next few weeks so keep an eye out for that if you do like the throne of glass series and if you have read it before because my throne of glass videos are full of spoilers finally we have pretty girls by karen slaughter this is the last book i read um i was actually quite disappointed with this book i feel like maybe there's something wrong with me because my interpretation based on what other people have said about this book is that it's gory gruesome really dark and I thought it was tame. I thought it was really, really tame and mild and <laughs> boring. I thought this was predictable. I thought it was going to be really gory and dark. Clearly, my interpretation of dark and gory is not the same as other people's. I did grow up on horror films. I've seen a lot of gory things. I love gore in films. As an adult, I enjoy watching true crime documentaries. Me and my boyfriend have watched a lot of true crime documentaries and that's real life. I feel like I'm a little bit desensitized to the contents in this book. So I ended up giving this three stars. I wouldn't recommend it if you, like me, have watched a lot of horror films or true crime documentaries. I don't think it's that interesting. I don't feel like it's dark. I liked the writing. It was very easy to read. I liked the different perspectives and the way that the story unfolded. If you can recommend me something similar to this but less predictable and a bit more gruesome, please do so in the comments. If you've read this before, what did you think of it? Let me know. So there you have it, guys. So that was everything that I read in July and August. If you've read any of these books, please let me know what your thoughts were. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.